I, you know, there's, there's, uh, there was another access to that property, and I don't know how far it goes, but uh, off Christian Lane, the bridge there near 91, between 91 and the tracks, there's that ramp there up high by the bridge that goes down along 91. I don't know how far that goes, or, or, because I, I, or who owns that, or what gives it access? Ask access to it. Where that goes? Yeah, I see on some maps. It's called Christian Lane Service Road. Oh, it is. Yeah, and I don't know if it's meant to provide access to ninety one or not. Well, that might make sense. Does it yeah. provide access to ninety one for the fire department? Maybe I don't know. But I don't know where that joins ninety one. Once you go down that road. Uh, yeah. Or or it ends at the at the pond that's down there. I, I don't I don't know. I have to look at the map maybe and see, but yeah. Sorry, Sylvie. Or whether that that could have just provided access to the property along there. And that's why maybe they left that road there when they put 91 in to give access to them parcels along between 91 and the railroad. Yeah. But it's it's not a town road. It's not improved or maintained or anything, so. Right. Yeah, you got him. Well, I got the round <laughs> oh, Okay. Oh, boy. Um, you referenced the... Um, Let's see. There's no one waiting for them, right? Um, I mean, who else is in the group? Is it Brenda and Kristen, Judy, uh, uh, Yeah, Brenda, Judy. Uh, Kristen. Kristen Vivon, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, it's 10 after if we want to just start, sort of start throwing out thoughts. I mean, um, so, um, we have a little bit of traffic data um, because Brian uh, uh, was able to um, help us out with that from Burkhog's uh, uh, data. Um, and then we have the parcel, the parcel data that I sent out to you all that um, Berkshire Design came back with. And then we have the, um, the, the transit map. Um, uh, we've sent word out to um, the Fish and Game uh, uh, people to ask about that small, that area where we were thinking, or the question had been raised about having that small parking area for access to the fish and game uh, preservation land. Um, and um, yeah, I don't know if, uh, if anyone else has any, um, you know, uh, things that have come up since our last meeting or comments or anything like that, or Fred, you have more updates. Um, I don't mind just just chiming in. Um, part, part of the reason why um, Sylvia and I wanted to meet with just the group is that um, Judy had reached out to us and she's not here, but um, and she was concerned that about the little work that Berkshire Design Group had done or what felt like a little work that Berkshire Design Group had done. And she wanted, she expressed her concerns about, about that. Um, and I tended to agree with her. Um, so we had, uh, you know, we reviewed their scope of work and um, Sylvie emailed uh, Jeff from Berkshire Design Group asking for, you know, a lot of the information that they said that they could give us in terms of the plan. Um and it, I think the response was kind of kind of weak. Um, 
you know, there's there's a lot of stuff within the scope of work, and and I don't have a copy of it here, but um, you know, we just wanted to their main job was to provide us data about the area in terms of the existing conditions and and, and stuff like that. And um, I think they were able to provide stuff for the low hanging fruit. Um, you know, it's pretty easy to get land use code. You know, it's pretty easy to find land use codes. It's pretty easy to find zoning. Um, it's pretty easy to find. They seem to have all the stuff that's already, you know, readily available that you can find in any GIS layer or, or looking through the zoning bylaw. Um, but part of, you know, part of what we were hoping that they would do is, is provide some sort of the, the market analysis or, or ideas about what uses might be, what uses might, uh, do well within that area. Um, so that's sort of why we wanted to meet in their absence. Um, and Judy was, Judy was a big proponent of, of wanting to meet with them. Um, so I'm not sure what happened, but um, I'm sure she had some thoughts as well. But I mean, we are we are where we are, um, and I think we need to provide Berkshire Design Group with with direction as to we are where we are. So so where do we want them, or where do we want them to take this? I think is something that we need to figure out. Um, so that that's that that's my two cents. I've been what's the schedule after this or what what is expected a a, what, a plan a report and then a, a public meeting and then acceptance by the board could you kind of make, make a time frame of, of all this um i can see if i can bring up this couple of work yeah it, yeah it's essentially a um it's a it's a final plan um that that's um you know it was a, a an assessment of existing conditions um as the as the first step and then it was an analysis of things like traffic market conditions zoning um with the intent that the group would based on all of those things the group would you know along with Berkshire design group make recommendations for you know generally you know how to improve the economic development within that area um the timing is we're not really constrained by by timing too much it's 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 the pace that we want to work at but yeah it's a final economic development plan for the area with recommendations um so far they've they've said that we should focus on old state road um and it's one part of it, sure. Um, but uh, there needs to be more. And I think we need to provide them direction. Yeah, I've been wondering about market a uh, market analysis um, because they haven't touched on that at all. And I wondered if that was even in their scope of services. But we did, you did contract them to do that because they've shied away from that pretty consistently. Yeah, it's it's definitely. It's, it's felt like it's sort of been, you know, here's here's the uh, the landscape plan, and what do you guys want to do, town of Waitley? Right. And we're all kind of going, oh, well, I don't know. <laughs> um, what do you want to do? Yeah. So they're supposed to give us that guidance, and they haven't. Is that the the story? Yeah. Okay. Weren't yeah. they involved with the uh, with the uh, the Sugarloaf Shops building is with the marijuana uh, proposals there? Weren't they involved in doing design work or analysis of traffic or impacts when that was being proposed? Was that Berkshire Design Group doing that? You remember, Brian? Uh, they I know they were with. Uh, I I don't remember. I know they were definitely with the 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 greenhouses on the corner of State Road and Five uh, Christian Lane. Right. I don't know if they were involved with uh, the Sugar Loaf Shops or not. Because I I guess if they were, they maybe have market impacts or traffic impacts or something. 
of that development there that was going in. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, we're pretty. I was pretty disappointed because they said, "Oh, there's not much data," and I'm like, "It's a state highway." Yeah. <laughs> of course, there's data. Like, yeah. I reached out to FERCOG, and they're like, "Oh, yeah, we have data. You know, data at least within the area. Of course, they're gonna. It, it's. I, I don't know. Um. But that's that's me uh, being frustrated. So, yeah. Um, yeah, the scope of work does include. Uh, Market analysis. So do we uh, need? To, yeah. Do we do we need to um, compare the scope of work in writing to them to what? we've received from them so far and say now we need the rest of it <laughs> uh, well uh, that's we did that um like after our last meeting um, uh -huh. we took deliverables from the scope of work and asked specifically for this particular type of data mm -hmm. and and this is what they came back with so far so which seems like a beginning it's but limited not, yeah. Yeah. yeah um so we can continue to um, you know, make very specific requests of them and, and just try and draw that information out, I suppose. Um, um, I guess what 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 would a market analysis mean to, to them? What does it mean to us? I guess I'm a little confused about that, but just sort of like what would we want them to give us? Because like we asked them for specific things this time and we got, you know, the response we got so i'm just wondering what i should try and get now for a market analysis uh and this was sort of like for the first phase you know we asked for the deliverables from the first phase uh and you know after we come up with the plan then we would be talking about things like um having a, sort of a, a meeting and, and showing people the idea i guess but that's later on um so yeah i, I suppose i'm not sure um yeah, if we have a clear idea of what we want to give us, maybe that would be helpful in terms of like making sure we actually get <laughs> the information we're wanting. I always assumed that Brian, correct me if what you were anticipating you were going to get from them was different, but for me, a market analysis is this is a particular kind of demographic, and these are the kinds of things that people spend money on, and these mm -hmm. are the kinds of places in the road where people might pull over and these are the kinds of things people tend to spend money on when they pull over and you know you've got an age range of x y and z and who's traveling north and south on 91 mm -hmm. uh, you know yeah. comparisons of similar exits off the highway that have places where people stop and spend money um, for similar kinds of I mean, we keep, I I keep saying the mill district, like some kind of a research into that. What went into that? Yeah, is it successful? What do we do? Folks traveling just want a Dunkin' Donuts, um, but a very specific look at comparisons to to other similar sites and the kinds of money that goes in and out. And the people that go in and out, so we can start to make decisions about what might be possible for our place. That's what I'm assuming market analysis is, but is that correct? Um, I I think so. This is I I did find the scope, and this is of course their scope. They provided the the language here. It says working with a team of consultants, which would include real estate agents, commercial developers, and marketing experts. An assessment of existing market conditions will be prepared. Period. Yeah. Yeah, this, hello. this will include commercial activity, access to a varied workforce, visitor tourist numbers, and expected growth patterns in the next five to 10 years. Yeah, all of that. And like the visitor tourist numbers, I mean, that's a conversation with uh, the chamber, right? Or I don't know if Yankee Candle shares their numbers or not, but yeah. or or Treehouse shares their numbers, but that's the main driver, right? Yeah. So, um. That is we, did we ask him for that? I remember talking about, you know, looking at the corridor between uh, Northampton and Greenfield. What's there? What isn't? What's successful? What isn't? And 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 look at what type of 
of commercial say development would would work best in that corridor. I, I thought we already we asked them about that, and I guess we haven't got it yet. Right. I'm wondering, I'm wondering if this is a case of it's a small enough project that they have backburnered it a little bit and not really sunk their teeth into it, to use a couple of different uh, phrases. And yeah. we need to, you know, give them that specific language from their uh, from their scope of work and say, you know, let's talk to the real estate people. Let's hear from your marketing experts. Let's hear from your chamber contacts. We haven't seen any of that. Yep. Uh, unless you're just thinking of firing them. <laughs> no, I, I don't think that would get us. Uh, well, <laughs> I mean, you've worked with them before and it's been fruitful, right? So this is just kind of a bad, like a not so great situation. I've, um, we've worked with other people in the firm and they've been oh. excellent. Um, is there somebody who runs the firm who's not the person that we're dealing with? I, I'd i have to, I'd have to look into that. Um, Sylvie and I had a call with, with, somebody else from Berkshire Design Group this morning to talk about the, the possible, you know, grant application. Um, mm -hmm. Great, uh, like, willing to help us out. It, it's It's been great. And then this has sort of been slow. Um, but yeah, that marketing, you know, that everything that we just talked about really informs, I think, what recommendations look like in terms of in terms of zoning and in terms of oh yeah recommendations um so I mean, it I think like we're kind of wandering around in the dark and i didn't realize that the scope of work included all of that um i might have piped up and complained earlier too <laughs> like <laughs> yeah well, you could, Brian, either you or Sylvia could uh, write a letter to and ask them, when are you going to give us a presentation on this part of the, the scope of work that you're supposedly working on and see what we get? Yeah, and that's that that's the next step, right? Sylvia had written them after after Sylvia and Judy had talked. Um, you know, Sylvia wrote a pretty detailed email asking for, you know, some of the items line by line in terms of the scope of work and um the, the response was was meager at best um so it's Je jeffrey squire mm -hmm. yeah okay. who have you liked working with uh chris chamberlain but he's a uh engineer by by trade right okay So, and, and like, this is, this is, again, my frustration, but, you know, when, when we had that, um, when we had the stakeholder meeting and, you know, the, the presentation was not that great, they showed up 10 minutes, whatever it was, five minutes late, like it would just, it just hasn't been, hasn't been, just hasn't been good. So do you want to keep trying to tease the information out of them or do you want to say to them you're underperforming <laughs> uh, i think i think <laughs> i think both <laughs> okay yeah yeah um and i don't know sylvie what's your take because you've had more interactions with with uh jeff recently than i have well i feel like he hasn't been terribly forthcoming like i i um emailed him I think it was just earlier today um, to ask the specific question about the um, or to, to direct them to get us some specific information about that area south of Tritown Beach. Mm -hmm. um, and he just replied, well, we'll see what we can find out sort of thing. So um, it's <laughs> like I feel like uh, uh, and the initial the email we got back when I, I sent them, you know, some detailed uh, stuff about what we wanted for this meeting to, to talk about um, 
was that they were hesitant about making sort of um, assessments about uh, what was the wording? They they um, they didn't want to uh, draw conclusions about specific uses because um, there's a lot of you know variation depending on what we decide to do. Um, so they're they're sort of um, being a little bit vague in terms of you know what they're offering uh, to provide. So I I don't know. I feel like I've been um, you know trying to get a. Uh, Get us more information from Jeff, but maybe maybe if we I could like set up a call instead because the you know um, communicating by email uh, hasn't been that effective. Mm -hmm. so, Brian, Brian, which one of them lives in in Sunderland? I think there was is that Chris or Jeff because I remember one of them was involved with. Uh, the Frontier Track project we had it, and he had a student in Frontier, and there was some, I guess, you know, backroom connections or whatever, because he had a student in Frontier and he lived in Sunderland. Do you remember which one that was? I don't. I would guess Chris, but no, I'm not positive. Because if you know, if you get somebody, if it is him, he's familiar with the area. Otherwise, if you get somebody that's in an office somewhere else, they don't know any know that much about the about the area directly or personally I guess yeah so what is your hope for this meeting tonight to have some kind of direction about contacting them well this was supposed to be uh, an opportunity to um discuss uh some uh to discuss like uh, without their presence um you know any conclusions that we've drawn from uh, the information that we've gotten from them so far so that we can give them more direction and have a more fruitful meeting when next we invite them to join us um so uh, it would have been nice for us to have more to sort of discuss and um, uh, and use to come up with, you know, different ideas and directions that we want to take this in. But I guess as of now, um, it seems like we're still in the place where we need to get more out of them before we can really move forward much at all. Um, so, you know, unfortunately, we don't have too much to go over tonight unless you know anything <laughs> the only thing that struck me was it's nice that there's public transportation to nice. all of the areas that we're looking at developing whether it's franklin regional or PBPA. yeah PBPA. Um, but the the bits of the parcels and stuff yeah that's that looked to me more like stuff that we need them to pull together into a cohesive presentation about this is available, this is not available. If you put these three parcels together, you could do this. Okay. Yeah. Um you know, they I think they showed us at the, at the last meeting examples of other cities that have done something in, in corridors or areas like this. Uh but I think we we gotta keep in mind that we're not developing another downtown area mm -hmm. like they showed in some examples. This is what happened and how it was redeveloped and how business came. We're not looking for that. This is not going to be another downtown area. Uh, and and the other thing is uh, they showed maps of the, uh, I guess, jurisdiction of the highways in the area, what the, we know state roads and what the town had jurisdiction of. I guess I don't know if I mentioned this before or not. I would like to see where the where the boundaries are for them highways. Where's the right of way boundaries for mm -hmm. not, not so much for Old State Road, but for when one sixteen comes into that intersection, you've got a lot of land on the north side that is well. There's a grassy area, and then you got a big parking lot. You got a fence that runs somewhere on the grass area. Where is the where is the state right of way for that road and, and even I, I guess the others? Uh, they call the the DPW and uh, Mass Highway in Northampton, 
and get that information. I, I guess I'd like to see where that is to see how much more room we have in that parking lot to do something. Or if we can do it, I think somebody mentioned there's some restrictions on what you can do on the state state uh, property or state right away. Well, what are the restrictions? Can you do parking or can you, you can't put a building up, but you, can you do parking or uh, picnic tables or tents or a gathering area? Is that is that allowed or not? Uh, I think that would tell us what else that we could look for in, in that area of the Because um, what, if you if you look, I don't know where they're getting the boundaries. If you look at the assessors maps or, or GIS maps, that isn't always accurate. It doesn't tell you that the exact boundaries. And if you if you drive there yourself, I remember seeing there's markers, stones on the right of way for 116 that are not at the bottom of the parking lot. They're somewhere in the middle of that grass area. What I could what I could figure out now is that true or not? I, I don't know. So from from their last presentation, they, they it seemed that they wanted us to focus in um, on the old state road area and talk about doing uh, sort of a walkable place there. But are we saying that we um, don't want them to? Uh, we would prefer for them to give us lots of options about several different areas within the study area um and just say well you know for instance um you know in this particular spot we've got you know these different parcels of land if we were to acquire this parcel we could join it with the other one and like sort of theorize that way about what could happen in different areas and like give us multiple options um uh, is that sort of what we're hoping for? And then it could be informed by the um, the market data and then we could like pick and choose sort of and say, well, right now we really want to focus on developing, you know, two, two sp spots in our study area. Is that sort of how we want to approach this? That sounds appropriate to me, but okay. what, do, what do Brian and Fred think about it? Well, yeah, that's an option, I guess. One way of getting it to... Think about proposing something. <laughs> I mean, I, yeah, because I feel like we don't have enough information yet to say yes. At Old State Road is the is like by the sugar workshop. Yes, but I, to I don't think we have enough information to say yeah, we're settling on this. Yeah, um, yeah, and I think it would be you know easier from their perspective to just pick a spot and be like well this is all you know this is a, a vision of what you could do here if you wanted to you know, do that but i think that what we want is a little bit more um more complicated in the sense that we we want multiple options for multiple spots and sort of then then we can sort of assess um from that what we want to do um what you said <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the way I think about it is we have a couple things going on. One is the we have the the physical parcels. Yeah. Um, and what they've done is essentially identify the vacant ones, um, which isn't very difficult. Yeah. Um, but there's also saying there's there's also nothing saying that somebody might want to redevelop what's there as well. Yeah. Um I always think about the Circle K and Waitley, and I would just, you know, yeah, it could use a facelift. Let's put it that way. Um, so the physical parcels are are, are one question, and then the, the the other questions are, you know, does that based on a market assessment, which we don't have, what might be successful here, and then. Does our zoning allow those types of uses that might be successful here mm -hmm. to actually happen on these parcels? And what is this, if if all if all that falls into place, what sort of safeguards do we need in the zoning bylaws to make sure that those uses are compatible with with the with the neighborhood, with the surrounding uses? Um, so I mean, I, I see sort of three or four different things. The other thing that struck me was when um, when we were talking is that uh, somebody mentioned pedestrian connectivity. Um, and I'm just thinking if Norea is going to put in this really large 
or whatever it's going to be. Let's say it's going to be popular for 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 um, motorists. Um, pedestrian connectivity from from you know the Waitley Diner, Waitley Truck Stop, to the two other areas within you know that exit thirty five area. Can we get? Can we move pedestrians safely through there? Um, because I'll sometimes I see people walking, you know, they walk from the truck stop to, um, I don't know where they're going if they're walking up to Dunkin' Donuts or not, but it's not a very pedestrian friendly area. Um, and if we're going to bring lots of people in there, maybe that's something else that they should focus on. Uh, another concern that that came up over this weekend, where there was a, a massive amount of people in that area, um, you know. Again, there was some pedestrian safety issues with the crosswalk that's immediately in Deerfield. Um, I guess apparently it's not well lit, although there's flashing yellow beacons when people are in the crosswalk. But you wrote uh, police chief was saying you can't really see people in the crosswalk when it's dark um, yeah. because you have lights from the other from the, the car facing the other way. And it was difficult and there were cars slamming on their brakes and stuff like that. Um, so pedestrian safety, pedestrian connectivity. Um, also seem to seem to be something that we should focus on. So those are my thoughts. Um, I, I, when I was looking at the area, I used that crosswalk and that I was like, oh, this doesn't seem like great crossing space here just because people aren't expecting there to be a crosswalk there. So even though they do have those big flashing things, it kind of still feels like you're walking across the highway. Um, but so, uh, we had said, or someone had said that, you know, we don't want to necessarily be like picking out, like, this is where we want to have a restaurant. This is where we want to have a, whatever. We just want to sort of, um, set the stage in terms of zoning and making it accessible. And, um, if we know the, the market data, then we could, you know, make it known to businesses in general in the area that this is an attractive area. And we know for a fact that, you know, there would be, a you know, however much traffic um, for businesses that set up there. Um, so pedestrian uh, friendly is one thing that it, that would involve the whole, like, who owns the roads and stuff, right? Mm -hmm. So like the area I'm thinking like, look that Deerfield on the one side and then the diner area like I guess that's when I don't I don't really know how that would go but because we need to it's not like all hours to change right mm -hmm. so but like we'll have to communicate with mm -hmm. a lot of people about how to make it pedestrian friendly but you almost want one of those bridges yeah one of those pedestrian bridges out of the roadway to really <laughs> make it safe yeah Otherwise, it seems a little scary. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, um, it's tricky. <laughs> yeah, right? Those are expensive. Right? <laughs> hmm. in, in all, that would be conversations with MassDOT, right? That, that a consultant could have. Uh-huh. <laughs> and that I, one, of the, one of the pieces I forgot to add when I was on my spiel was also infrastructure as well, right? Um, yes. Thinking about, and I was alluding, alluding to it before, that if we need to relay out a road to make a parcel, you know, to create access, legal access to a parcel, then that should be a recommendation. Um, mm -hmm. Should it just be like, here's what you got, so good luck. Right. <laughs> That's all the information we have. <laughs> right. The road ends here. Sorry. Well, we can extend roads. And there's a cost to it, but let's figure let's figure out what it is, and then we can make decisions. But yeah, so I think I, I even mentioned that at the last meeting. Yeah, the at the end of end of Old State Road and at the Whaley boundary, you could go west to connect with uh, with Route Five there. There's a, a barn and a house and some other building there. I mean, you don't need to buy all three structures. You could probably buy one and make the make the connection there to to uh, State Road and make that a continuous loop there. Uh, another thing comes to mind: they were getting uh, 
traffic data from uh, FERCOG. Uh, how is that intersection there rate on FERCOG's high accident locations for the region? I know at one time that's why the state did some work on the ramps for uh, coming off of 91 and, and maybe that intersection there. I, I don't know, is it still a high priority? Is there a number of accidents there? Is accident uh, a concern at that intersection? Yeah, I don't know. I'm not sure. I feel like there was recently a bicycle accident there. I don't know the exact spot. <laughs> But but the but it, talking about pedestrian, uh, you know there is pedestrian. Well, there's bikeway lanes if you go north of there in, in Deerfield, and there's also what sidewalks from Yankee Candle that goes to the what Dunkin' Donuts. You know, uh, yeah. maybe there's a need to continue them further south to the to the truck stop if if that's where people are going to park and walk to. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is this so, a com complete streets issue, like the walkability thing? <coughs> Say more about complete streets. So oh. that I know what it is. Well, um, I don't uh, have in depth knowledge of. Uh, everything that they do, but um, but they they have these walkability surveys or studies to 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 see um, if there are areas that need um, better uh, better sidewalks, better roadways, and signage and that kind of thing. So mm -hmm. um, there's, I mean, there's a source of uh, funding. So right. um, okay. I don't know if that's something that we can maybe leverage for this <laughs> leveraging funding as well as we can. Yeah. Yeah, I sort of imagine them coming back with plans of several different areas and then maybe even like, I'm imagining it like playing with blocks, mm -hmm. like plans and then, you know, this is a restaurant, it would need X amount of infrastructure to sustain it, it would be this many square feet, it could maybe go here, it could maybe go here, how do you like the arrangement, this is a, mm -hmm. you know, this is a coffee shop, this is a whatever, all the different things and we can like plug and play mm -hmm. in different areas and go, oh, we kind of like it up here better, yeah. or we're not allowed to do that up there, we have to move this over here. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think I was just saying what other people have said in a different way. For me, I think the market assessment is really the next step that that we yeah. need. Uh, but it's fine. The existing conditions, fine. That's that's what they have. But I think to take the next step, um, all right. Um. Yeah, so I suppose, um, you know, I can reach out to Jeff and say, when are you planning to give us the market assessment <laughs> and what's going to be included in it? <laughs> yeah, yeah um, you say the committee, the committee is asking for when the market assessment will be uh, presented. Yeah. yeah, when it will be presented, because we feel that that's that that is really going to inform all of the next steps. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. And yeah, and I want to try and get a sense of how robust it's going to be so that we're not <laughs> super disappointed when we present it. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> but I, I thought I thought Julie gave a good a now a good uh, description of really what we want them to do. Yeah. You know, what are what are other <clears throat> what are other you know what what's around other interchange areas that we would consider successful mm -hmm. um what what makes an interchange area successful um we don't want to look at bad ones obviously <laughs> what's that we don't want to look at bad ones yeah the yeah. ones that have all the businesses closed let's avoid those <laughs> yeah and what do we need what do we need in order to support something that's that's an example of success and do we need certain kinds of infrastructure or certain kinds of 
yeah, whatever. Different configurations, what the barriers would be, what would be most fruitful. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, um, go for it. All right. <laughs> and Brian, can you thank Judy for speaking up? Because, uh, yeah, that it was very valuable that that she brought her concerns to you, and that we then got to discuss them. Because. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah just felt like those previous meetings were like pulling teeth and I couldn't figure out why. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I, I was, when, when she reached out, I, I was like, I had the same exact feelings. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, maybe I'll thank her for <laughs> reaching out. Uh, I, I just wanted to say, I guess, to clarify for myself too, is like they, virtual design, I feel like they are, they are, um, reluctant to speculate, but we need them to do some informed speculation. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I will, uh, I will keep bothering them, and um, I'll do my best to get uh, a great presentation for next time. <laughs> and Sylvia, I'm ha I'll, I'll, I'll think about it a little bit more tonight, and I'll send, I'll send an email off. Okay. I'll gather my thoughts a little bit more. Okay. Um, but yeah, um, this uh, this was helpful for me, so I appreciate at least a couple of you showing up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, thanks, you guys. Thank you. Thank you. I will uh, talk to you all soon. Thank you for continuing to pester them. Yeah. <laughs> all right. We'll see you. Okay, good night.